the recording. Okay, uh, <laughs> Joseph, uh, I'm going to start this session. Awesome. Start as an impromptu, but uh, hopefully uh, I'm going to call it how to become a missionary to Cambodia like awesome Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So what let's, start, let's start with prayer. Father, we ask for your anointing. God, we are nothing without you. There's nothing we can do that could transform a nation. Never mind. We don't even know how to transform ourselves, Lord. And so, Amen. Father, help us. And as Joseph has a heart for Cambodia, wanting to come, uh, that every session that we do from now on will not only um, touch him, but touch many, many Josephs like him who wants Amen. to be used by you, Amen. wants to serve you, but don't know how. And no one has told Amen. them uh, the loop, the, taught them the loop, how to get into it and, and how to Amen. start. And so, Father, if there's any enemy that's been working so hard, uh, Joseph, like him, that who got discouraged and gave up, God will watch this and say, Amen. man, that's not that hard. If Joseph Hawk can do it, I could do it. <laughs> So, Father, we <laughs> thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, brother. I'll share a little. Okay. Uh, Give you a little bit of my background. I actually actually spent a lot of time in prison. So if I can do it, then <laughs> anybody can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, I, uh, so be, as a first session, uh, because you sent me an email and then attached this flyer you made. And I thought, wow, this will be a great first lecture on uh, becoming a missionary in Cambodia. I'll be very specific about Cambodia because that's the nation that God called you. So the future people who listen to it uh, may contextualize in their own context. Number one, I really, really love the fact that you put beautiful Cambodian children on your flyer, okay? Lesson number one, don't ever sell poverty as your base for your mission, okay? Did you know that there is actually a technical term in missiological study? Mm. Poverty prostitution. Mm. You know, uh, some of the well-meaning, but some jacked up missionaries, they mm. really uh, prostitute poverty as their base. Now, this is, if your ministry is mercy ministry to the poor, I'm not talking about you. If your ministry is helping the poor, that's great. Then you need, you know, I just, I just finished two hour meeting with some major, major uh, mission agency here. I mean, wow. You know, I, I just had a two hour prayer meeting with CEOs of the huge organization in Cambodia and their entire ministry is helping the poor. So of course, you know, but for example, some, some well-meaning but kind of stupid missionary who come to Cambodia, guess what they do? They put up the picture of poor Cambodian kids and they don't live, they don't even live among the poor people. They don't even do anything with poor people. They move into Phnom Penh, and you've been to Phnom Penh. If you come and stay at the center, the downtown of Phnom Penh, you see more Range Rover SUV, you see more Lexus SUV than in the heart of Beverly Hills. I kid you not. Wow. Right? And yet, when some well meaning but stupid missionary from the, the West or from Korea comes, first picture they put on their Facebook is poor kids. They are prostituting poverty as if putting that on, they legitimize. They, they, become, they become more like, oh, I'm, I'm suffering for Christ in, in a dump like this, right? And maybe hoping that they could raise more money for themselves, you know? That is just, yeah, it's terrible. And so when I first got it, I thought, wow, I like, I like Joseph Hua. This is, I think, second time we're meeting. <laughs> First time briefly at a church, and now this. I like Joseph Hua already. <laughs> you know yeah. what Hua means in Korean? It means angry. So I'm not angry with Joseph Hua. 
<laughs> I like Joseph Wah because he put the right picture. That's good. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this uh, little thing uh, in the section because I'm, I'm now in, I'm enlarging that little section there. Yeah, 6.8 million is correct. And total 44, unreached people group 19, percentage of group unreached of the, the, of the unreached group. So you need to be very, very, what you probably want to put is not really the unreached group because it's kind of irrelevant actually. Uh, what you want to do is actually, uh, what you want to write is a percentage of Christian. Okay, mm -hmm. percentage of Christian. Uh, uh, and there's a many, many statistics out there and, and talk to me about that because certain people claim big number of percentage of Christian, which is a lie. That's just not, that's just not true. So uh, it's something like 1.6% or, you know, or 0.6% depending on who you talk to. But uh, so, yeah, it's very, 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 very small number of population is Christian. Majority Buddhist. Okay. And then in your flyer, you, you had this click for people group listing. So <laughs> I tried to click, but it wasn't linked. Is that a mistake? Yeah. No, no. I actually took a screenshot from the Joshua project. So I couldn't get rid of it. Ah, okay, okay. It. Yeah. Then you should need to take a screenshot, different screenshot. Because that was like, I was spending some time clicking, clicking, like, what the heck, man? <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, sure, uh, so you need to correct that one too. And yeah, then sure. you wrote calling. That was great. I love these personal stories. Yeah, and I think, you know, people are reading it. It's you, you kind of put it at a personal level, which is great. This is a great, great uh, first time uh, flyer, which, and then second page. And uh, then, then, of course, your personal story continues. You talk about, your encounter uh, with four Buddhist boys, okay? And they were traditional orange Buddhist robes. And as you listen, one of the boys were really hearing as if he longed for the life and love we spoke about. You could almost hear his thoughts contemplating the sacrifice he would have to make in order to follow Jesus. That's great. Um, but being here 20 years, and uh, actually meeting with a lot of these monks, especially uh, monk, boy monks, um, it is an honor for Cambodian boys. At least one time in your life, you have to be a monk. Mm -hmm. So if you're a good Khmer, uh, Cambodian person, if your parents die or whatever, at least you, know, you shave and become a monk for a month or a week, whatever, year, depending. And if you're poor, you're given to temple, and pagoda, and you become pagoda boy. And so they will feed you, they will educate you. So when you read Cambodian, uh, about Cambodian history, Cambodian psychology, uh, the color orange always give them comfort because mm -hmm. the, the monk's robes are orange. The color of choice is orange. And a six-headed cobra called Naga, the symbol of Cambodia, always give them shalom, peace. So when a, a typical Western mind uh, hears that, they cringe. Oh my God, looking at six-headed cobra, they feel shalom, oh my gosh. Don't ever do that uh, in Cambodian context, okay? Don't ever come to Cambodia and look at a six-headed cobra and say, that has to get out and that's the symbol of Satan and all that, right? Uh, it's like Cambodian guys going to America and looking at bald eagle and said, that's the devil. We need to kick the eagle out of the flag. You know what I mean? Or the, the top of the flag is always uh, American eagle. That is mm -hmm. a symbol of devil in America. We need to kick that out. You'll be fighting the wrong crowd, right? Uh, right. Six-headed cobra naga is like bald eagle in top of the American flag. Mm, wow. Yeah. Yeah, don't be stupid and fight something that you don't, that's not, you need never to pick up fight, right? So if the culture of 6,000 years, okay? 6,000 years compared to American history of 260 something and, and, and honor 
and don't ever have superiority complex that I am right because I come from a rich nation. I am right because I'm rich. You're wrong because you're poor, okay? I'm right because I'm American. I'm right because I'm Chinese. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be the wrong way. So you wrote something that's very interesting. This may not be true, okay? So that's your personal opinion. So that's good because, and that, and I'm not judging that. I'm not saying, so issue is not right and wrong. Issue is how many books have you read on Cambodian history to actually know what's going on in the minds of a little boy, okay? Because in the minds of a little boy, a monk, pagoda boy, his greatest desire would be someone adopt him from church to make him his son, to pay for his education, send him to America, <laughs> make him American citizen so he could get out of this hellhole. <laughs> that will be his you know, focus. And so if someone says, Jesus loves you, man, I'll provide for you. He does, he's not committed to Buddha. Yeah. Buddhism is godless religion. They don't believe Buddha's God. So when you introduce Jesus as God and introduce Jesus as this prosperity gospel, man, when you become Christian, you could be like that pastor in America who lives in a $10 million home and driving million dollar Ferrari. And he's like, you know, prosperity, prosperity. Man, I want to become Jesus's son, man. Can you adopt me, uncle, as my son and send me through America so I would drive Ferrari and live in $10 million home like that? Famous American pastor that everybody's reading about. See, the prosperity gospel came to America from America and turned Cambodia into hellhole. You know, mm -hmm. the kid that who wanted to give sacrifice their life for the gospel now said, well, pay me. Otherwise, I will not serve God. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you could almost hear the thoughts contemplating the sacrifice you would have to make in order to follow Jesus. No, that's not what he's contemplating. He's saying that, <laughs> well, I met this American guy. Man, maybe through his connection, he could become my patron. I become his client, and then my life is set. Because I see a lot of my village folks. He was nobody. He got connected with American missionary. Now he drives nice car. Wow, he's sending his kids through international school. How does he do that? You know, uh, this uncle, so-and-so's friend, who was nobody. He was the poorest guy in the village. Whoa, he becomes a friend to American missionary. Whoa, he's got a job that pays five times more than, whoa, my uncle farmer, whoa, and he's sending his kids to the international school, whoa, you know, you become the patron of their life. They're not mm -hmm. contemplating sacrifice at all. They're thinking about, ding, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> yeah. American gospel have turned Cambodia into opportunists, and mm -hmm. some of these opportunists became Christian criminals. And it's not their fault. Do hmm. not blame the cat, a hungry cat, for eating the fish that you put in front of them. Don't ever blame the hungry cat when you give them a fish and said, your goal is not to eat the fish. Shame on you. Because if you're the hungry cat, you would have eaten it too. Right? So I wrote a whole PhD on that, how to become an excellent patron, not without... <laughs> creating that a dependency issue. Okay. Yeah. So I have no problem with your first flyer talking about that because you see your personal observation, but I'm just pointing out the fact that your observation is correct at the time, but not necessarily uh, culturally sensitive. Gotcha. So second, and then you said that you went to Skype. The impression I had when I left that, uh, Okay, another was the pastor of the local church in Kaip. In his mind, 20s, oh, his mid-20s, he had gone through seminary training and was newly planted this church. We have several conversations and spent many hours together. The impression I had when I left uh, was that his heart was longing for help, for love, for brothers and sisters from the worldwide church to know he was there, not forgotten. Ever since then, God has been calling my heart back, something I would have never thought 
or imagine. That's awesome, man. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad God <laughs> called you in this short trip. Yeah. So, are you talking about this guy? Is it is it the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just sock. Sock. Uh, okay, good. Ah, he's got a cute daughter. Yeah. 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 I can't believe he's mid twenties. He looks like. I know. Late twenties or early thirties. But anyway, so, yeah. so mid twenties. So he is younger than you. Yeah. How old are you? Thirty six. Oh my gosh, you don't look 36, yeah. Joseph. Yeah. You look yeah. late 20s, man. Oh, probably that's generous. Usually I get early 20s. So hey, 36, you were born what, 85? 84. 84. I 37 next month, yeah. Wow. Yeah, my daughter is 80 uh, uh 36. So my first daughter oh, wow. is 36. So wow. you're like my son. Can I call wow. you son? You can. <laughs> All right, sunny boy. Okay, okay, sunny Johnny. Joseph, sunny Joseph. Okay. So now another oh, point on. about uh, the whole church planting in Cambodia. As I told you already, I uh, taught a 20-week course on church planting in Cambodia. Mm. Uh, and this is the context of Presbyterian church churches mm. in Cambodia. Korean, Cambodian, Presbyterian denomination planted 160 churches in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Only two churches are financially independent. 158 churches are financially dependent. So basically, if they stop supporting, only two will survive. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty sad. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so the, when you said that impression I had was that he's longing for help, love, and worldwide church to connect, uh, it would be uh, not correct because he's already connected to somebody. Otherwise, he would not plan a church. He is actually. Yeah. Someone's, someone's paying his salary. That's true. So, so that's good. I mean, that's cool. I have no problem with that. Because, uh, uh, but as a person who planted five churches in LA uh, and all of them self sustained and I had to pay huge price to plant a church. I had no money to feed my kids at one point. When I meet pastors like that, and because I taught them at seminary, I yell at them. I said, are you telling me that if we don't pay you, you're not going to plant church? <laughs> then you mm -hmm. become a salary man. You're not a pastor, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think what they need is, uh, in a way, uh, mentorship, partnership, suffer together, cry together. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's something that you need to put in the back of your mind. And so, um, and, and I want, one of the things that I want you to do is actually redo your flyer so that you kind of process that. <laughs> and then in your vision, in the same page, church planting has always been a passion that has driven me in ministry. That's good. Seeing Paul's blazing example of transforming lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, planting churches in the least evangelized areas of the world and reading of the Break tape, breathtaking revivals and church planting movement in the last century. These have I stock, stoked a fire in my heart ever since I first began to follow Jesus with my heart. That's great. Philippians 3.17. What does it say? It says, uh, join in, please join in my example, Paul, Paul saying. Yeah. So any flyers like that, don't ever just code. Put the, whole script, put the whole script, scripture on. Okay? Because the, the word of God has power. Amen. Not the quotation mark. <laughs> not the... <Yeah. laughs> See, nobody says, Philippians 3.17, oh my God, it changed my life. You know, the word itself <laughs> should be printed there. Because most people not go to Bible and look that up. I didn't. I didn't I'm lazy. I don't want to look it up. I said, hmm, I wonder what it is. Although I wrote a commentary in Philippians also. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then you talked about CPM. 
there. Yeah. CPM is Church Planting Movement by yeah. guys named David Garrison started. His yeah. book. I think I have his book. <laughs> yeah. His book on CPM is causing so much problem for Cambodia. Wow. Wow. <laughs> It's causing so much pain to me personally because I have to undo the, the, the mess that he has created. Because if you read the book, he uh, quotes Cambodia as the most successful case of how CPM is working in the world. Look at Cambodia. One of the fastest evangelized nation in the world. And mm -hmm. Cambodia is an example of how we should copy after. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I think, I don't think he's lying, but he should really check uh, his source, where he got that from. I don't think he ever visited Cambodia and, and, and surveyed. I think he's uh, uh, drawing his conclusion from a data that Southern Baptist pr print, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they are claiming that Southern Baptist planted 200 churches and their lively tens of, tens of thousands of Christians are being discipled. They're so happy. Each building costs 20,000. So they spent $4 million building this 200 churches, blah, blah, blah. And then, so I did my own research. And my team went out <laughs> and surveyed these 200 Southern Baptist churches. Uh, less than 20 churches are now in operation as a church. Hmm. So less than 20 are in operation. They spend $4 million and only 20 churches are existing as a church, worshiping as a Southern Baptist church. Hmm. So what happened? Well, pastor sold it probably to another denomination. Now using it as a pastor's house. <laughs> All that kind of nonsense. How come then, yeah. how come they don't follow up on that and report back to Southern Baptist that, hey, only 18 churches are functioning as a church. You correct that book. He said, no, no, no. Americans are completely capitalistic. The capitalism, you need to show in number. Mm -hmm. If you don't show a number, you're a failure. How much was the budget? $4 million. How many people are being discipled? 20,000. Wow. Wow, that's great. Because they think amount of money has to produce amount of number. Otherwise, they're not going to support. So they don't want their funding to stop. Mm -hmm. So guy like David Garrison could write a nonsense book like CPM and still teaches that at Southern Baptist seminaries till today. They're still teaching that today. <laughs> That's where I heard it from. Yeah. Gateway seminary. Yeah. yeah. And every, I, and I tell them over, I talk to the leaders. I tell them it's a crap. It doesn't work, at least in Cambodia. And they still, mm. oh, but if we tell this to Southern Baptist, our funding will end. Well, what about this poor grandma who gave 20,000 to think that they're building a church and go, what, he became mm -hmm. a pastor's house? Matter of fact, he sold it to another denomination for 10,000 to cash? Are you kidding me? And it's happening in Cambodia, okay? So your vision It's something not like that based on whatever, but something, I don't know, something a little more personal, okay? Uh, and then kind of think about that. What, what drives you, okay? What uh, uh, makes you, uh, what makes you? So it should be a little simpler. Uh, and your ministry plans. Uh, I plan to be overseas 10 plus years. Uh, is that your idea or is that what God told you? <laughs> um, I feel like God is telling me. I just don't know the future. So, <laughs> so, that's, so 
Yeah. We're planning for it. Yeah. yeah. So I actually have a, um, I actually have a, a Cambodian fiance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. She's so, in Cambodia right now. There is a there is a, a joke. There is a standard joke among the missionaries. Missionaries. Yeah. yeah. So when missionaries get together, <laughs> and we want to poke each other. I mean, okay. Icebreaker joke icebreaker joke among missionaries. When missionaries get together, and if you want to do icebreaker, then I, I, I said, hey, uh, can I start this meeting with a joke? Uh, and then everybody's kind of wait, and then I, I tell them, I just told God, I have a plan, Lord. <laughs> then everybody started laughing. <laughs> okay, why is that a standard missionary joke? Because if you're a missionary for 10, 20, 30 years, God don't give a crap about your plan. <laughs> yeah. Amen. God doesn't honor your plan. Amen. Don't ever go to God and say, God, I have a plan. <laughs> God says, okay, as long as you have a plan, I will not use you. Mm. I cannot use you because you have a plan. Because uh, God didn't call us to be a missionary to execute our plan. See, uh, just say that I plan to obey God. <laughs> <laughs> and because God told me to go to Cambodia, my plan is to obey God in Cambodia because God told me to go to Cambodia. I don't know what, I don't know how, right? So don't okay. give this kind of numbers, you know, uh, 10 plus years. Hey, you know. One of my best friends who was planning to have a revival meeting in six months died of COVID when I went back to America. Uh, my friends for 20 years. We're going to have a, a, a lunch together. He died in three weeks after we made the commitment. Amen. You know, the, the guy for friends for 10 years, 15 years, we're going to do a revival meeting at his church. When I went back to Cambodia, he died of COVID. Don't have a plan. I don't have a plan. <laughs> you know? God could do whatever he wants. So, you wrote, because Cambodia is an open nation to the gospel, there are many ministries there. I purposefully have waited to join a ministry. That's excellent. I love that. Purposely have waited to join a ministry. Though I am in contact with several of them, including Young Life Cambodia, IMB Cambodia, TF, New Life Church. That's great. See, this is the kind of all in presence of God. God, I don't know why Cambodia, because you call me to Cambodia, I'm going, you know, because I always tell God, God, my plan was to go to Hawaii and suffer for the surfers in Hawaii, Lord, but what's your plan? You know, <laughs> God says, <laughs> God says Cambodia. I said, darn, you know, how come, <laughs> how come God is so messed up? He doesn't respect my plan. <laughs> my plan is for Hawaii, Lord. Don't you get it? <laughs> but God says, no, Cambodia. So I'm here unwillingly, uh, but obediently. And so I don't, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, mm. So that's good. You have young life, old life, middle life, doesn't matter. IMF, you know, <laughs> IMF, IMB, you know, BMF, you know, yeah. IBM, I don't care. Uh, yeah. Cambodia team. New life, old life, middle life, doesn't matter, right? But that you say that you will be patiently waiting, you know? Uh, and, and not just you, but a lot of missionaries, guys, that I meet. When I meet them, uh, 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 what I do actually is I do one week shadowing. So let's say mm -hmm. a guy says, I don't know if God called me to be a missionary pastor. Um, what should I do? I said, oh, you could come over and you could spend one week with me uh, mm. and then you could shadow me and when i get up you get up when i eat you eat when i visit some people you visit so don't talk you're my shadow yeah. so when they shadow me for a week most most of the time they said god did not call me to be a missionary because <laughs> <laughs> they realized it was kind of a romantic idea but uh, they realized, no. I, and so this one guy in particular, he became a very successful pastor in America, Korea. Mm. And 
he has a large ministry and we're still good friends. And because he said, man, after seeing you in action a week in Cambodia with you, there's no way because mm -hmm. I'm an orderly guy. I need a plan. I need a structure. I, I got to know what I need to do next week. And like, and when I saw you in action, man, you wake up in the morning, you go, and then one thing leads to another, and then boom, let's go Batambang. And that day we took to Batambang. That's like eight hour trip, Pastor. And, and we meet somebody there, and that led to YM base, and I end up teaching there, and that led to another. You know, I'm like, I cannot live like mm -hmm. that. I said, really? Some people would just think this is fantastic, man. I said, yeah, but that's just not me. <laughs> so that's good. That's good, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and then another guy, I told him, he said, I'm, I'm quite serious. I want to do it. I said, that's good. When you come, don't ever make a come to a, minute, a, a ministry next two years. Mm. Okay? Because uh, mm. in olden days, in the mission of studies, mm. a two-year stay was considered short-term mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we turned it into two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two weeks is a vacation not mission yeah you know so they used they used to say well finish your two-year short-term mission and decide if you want to be long-term missionary but we decide mm -hmm. the two-week mission vision trip and then you know so yeah so anyway so yeah two two years get to know the people enjoy you know life and whatever and you mentioned new life church so that's good New Life Church, there are two New Life Church, by the way. New Life Church by Tang Bek Kong and that up, yeah. by, uh, the American. Somebody pointed that out, correct? Yeah. So you it's need, the New Life Fellowship. Right. So you need to, because it's going to confuse a lot of people. If, yeah. if my people receive your flyer, they will say, oh my gosh, he works with Pastor Tang Bek Kong. <laughs> they will be misinformed. <laughs> Uh, New Life Church is arguably the largest, most influential church in Cambodia, which I disagree. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> which has planted something I read on, online. Yeah. Which has planted hundreds of indigenous churches. I agree, but all of them still a dependent church. None of them will mm -hmm. survive if they stop salary, and has a large vision to plant hundreds more in coming years completely supported by foreign aid, mm -hmm. okay? So I always teach at my seminary, 10,000 churches like that will not bring gospel to this nation. Mm -hmm. It's not number of churches. See, already this church is thinking in capitalistic mode, right? More, more the better. Who told you that? If Jesus thought more discipleship better. How come he died with just one stinky 12 people discipleship training going? <laughs> right? It's not more the better. It's, it's got to do with the genuine, authentic quality. Okay? You don't want to multiply corrupted cell. When corrupted cell multiply, it becomes cancer. Okay? So uh, the New Life Church I love. Because I mean, I, I, I work actually, I, 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 I buy uh, books from New Life Church founder, uh, mm -hmm. wife, and we, I go to their house, I bought all of their books, they're moving, and they did a respectable work, I love their work, but um, I don't think they should represent Cambodia, mm -hmm. because they are foreigners. The foreigners church should never represent indigenous nation. For example, can you imagine if Pastor John Smith of America from Texas came and planted a church in Seoul and became the largest church in Korea and it represents Korea? Then all the Korean pastors would say, boo we on that. Why would Korea be represented by John Smith, guy from Texas? And why does it represent Korean spirituality when their ministry is financed by foreign money? Cambodian church could never mimic their worship because they bring people from Hillsong. Their, their conference costs tens of thousands of dollars. 
all their speakers from white people, Singaporean, Malaysian, rich pay pastors from Malaysia, 5,000 member church pastor come and do a workshop, you know, a millionaire businessman from Singapore do a workshop and, and they are always speakers. There's an, hardly any Cambodian pastor keynote speaker in their conferences. Okay. And these are the issues that I bring to their leadership and over and over again. Come on guys, you know, I understand Hillsong, great songs, but how many of Cambodian worship team that you know could mimic their techniques and synthesizers and $10,000 unit keyboards and, you know, sound system and Mackie of 16 channel and sound breakdown and mastering and, you know, 100 meter cable, the snakes and, and mix down and all that. It's just bullshit. You know, it's like you do all your own show, but hey, 70% of Cambodia do not have electricity, nor running water. <laughs> so be mindful of that, right? Mm. And because what happens is that when they go to conference like that, 70% of the worship people who came from the village, they're going to get all depressed. Because they can't. We will never worship like that. What's the point? Mm. Forget this, we are, have a loser church. Hmm. Our church is a loser, our pastor is a loser. You know, how come our pastor cannot get us this kind of sound system, right? So I did uh, 10 years of worship conference with the other hmm. new life, Pastor Tang Bekong Church. <laughs> and that is, that is the largest Cambodian church run by hmm. Cambodians. And I did 10 year worship conference and I intentionally held unplugged worship, playing with acoustic guitar, playing with cajon, playing with zim, uh, zimbe, cajon, so, uh, with, you know, so that, yeah, and then buy them whole bunch of cajon, whole bunch of, you know, uh, acoustic guitar, you know, $80 guitar, 40, if you pay 40 bucks, matching fund, I will literally buy, so many guitars and provide, 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 and then teach them how to worship with one acoustic with Kahon. Worship. And then at the end of three-day conference, I have everybody up and then do leader worship, sample worship without using any electricity. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there are so-called hundreds of churches. They, you know, that church has a hundred staff, hundred plus staff. Yeah. Yeah. You think their, their salary is coming from their offering? No. Mm -hmm. So how long are you going to do church like that in Cambodia? Mm -hmm. right. how, how is it an example church in Cambodia? Okay. I mean, I'm not knocking them down. I think this is a great church, but just, yeah. Some fundamental issues. Yeah. Catch you. So, uh, Located in the capital, they have a school to train missionaries and send them out with the culture of honor. New Life has been at the heart of uniting the churches in Cambodia and gently bringing them together to see blood washed nation. They were instrumental in the historical crusade held by Franklin Graham Phnom Penh 2019. If my associates, pastors yeah. that I associate with Khmer pastors in Cambodian villages, they will totally disagree with that. <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah, because you wrote that, they will yep. look at you and said, I don't want to, I don't want to minister with Joseph Hua because he doesn't understand really? Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah, because he is lifting up all these guys that they're wondering, like, oh, really? I mean, when are you going to do work among Cambodians? You know, why, why is your hero a white guy? You know, when are you become a, a Cambodian leader? See, and that's the, something that I address to them. As long as all your conference keynote speakers, the white people from America, Australia, England, by default, you're telling them Cambodian leaders, you're nobody. You'll never become a national leader. That's got to stop, right? That's got to stop. So that's what I mean. So that if you are uh, uh, thinking, and then that's what I'm teaching at Bible college, 
right now at seminary level, you know, these guys are thinking like, how do we own the gospel? How do we become a national leader? Okay. Uh, and there's a proverb in Cambodia. And that's something that they talk to each other. And they'll never share with missionaries. I'm writing a book on Com Cambodian proverbs now. So I know this info information intimately. <laughs> there's a book, uh, there's a proverb among Khmer that said, well, uh, ships or the yachts or the boats leave harbor, but harbor remains. When they talk about foreigners, they talk about missionaries, they talk about white pastors, they will say, yeah, the boats will leave. But they're boats. You're not rooted here. You don't belong. You're not part of the land. You're a, I don't care if you're a hundred foot yacht, you know, you're just a boat. The boat someday will leave the harbor, but harbor remains. You know, what are they saying to each other? Yeah, foreigners, they're foreigners. They're going to leave. When COVID-19 happened, they all left. No one's coming back. Oh, yeah, when there was a civil war, 1997, every missionary left. 100% missionary left when 1997 uh, uh, happened, you know. 99% of American missionary left, okay? And they all came back later. Guess what? Cambodian pastors do not trust missionaries who left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know a lot of Korean missionaries who never left. They suffered through, okay? I know a lot mm -hmm. of Cambodian pastors who's willing to give their lives for Korean missionaries because they feel like they gave their lives, right? So, yeah. So you, you be careful what you write uh, publicly mm -hmm. because you have just created not an enemy, but you create, you divide it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, uh, because, yeah, I won't, I won't say anymore. So and this is your third page. This is great. Um, though I am not yet joining ministry in Cambodia, I'm under a covering of Gospel Community Church that probably has to change, right? Because new church name. Yeah. The yeah. modern day mission, which is a five hundred one c three that handles the, and 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 most people don't know what five hundred one c three is. You might want to put a nonprofit or gotcha. gotcha. handles the finance of mission. Help to bring ONS connection to their ministry. There's a spelling error in you put mo day dot org, gotcha. and is missing. Thank yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, brother. Yeah. So. I'm quite anal when it comes to that because uh, it's missing. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. And then uh, you wrote uh, uh, 2018, course is Gateway Seminary. Um, you might want to qualify that. Is it Baptist Seminary or whatever? So people, Gateway Seminary could mean anything. So, and then you work with, yeah, this is good. Young Life. And I like the way that you put Young Life, life.org. Uh, working in new area, the last paragraph, I honor of working with emerging area director, Mark Statema. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, is that the, the white guy in the, the picture in the flyer? No, no. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So that, this is fine. Who are these guys? Those are some of the kids I worked with in Young Life. You know, Mark, is basic, like, <laughs> is it Khmer? No, Chinese. In where? Which country? United States. In Walmart, okay, because you, you need to qualify that. You need to qualify that because yeah. you're talking about Cambodia and you threw that out. I'm thinking, I don't see any Cambodian guy like that because they are already, you know, you could tell they're not Khmer. Yeah. So you might want to qualify that photo. And if you did put something on a flyer that that actually going to raise money, then you need their either verbal or written permission. Oh, really? Okay. Gonna, yeah. yeah, they could sue you. Gotcha. Yeah. 
some some guy could sue you and said, hey, you made money using my face, man. So you might mm -hmm. want to uh, do that legally. I and mean, this is technicality, but you you it mm -hmm. is very important. And how come there's no your face on your flyer? I mean, you put everybody else's face. <laughs> it wasn't a good one where <laughs> actually, you know what? In the I put it afterwards in the this is just a really rough draft, but uh, okay. I put one underneath on the right to the okay. Yeah, because so. usually what people do is especially Asian, we give out a relationship. Uh, still, Asians do not give to projects. They give to a person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, be, be sensitive. Uh, and then you put a need. Uh, monthly estimate of 1,000, upfront 4,000, and all that. If it was a kind of temporary thing, um, so how much of that has been met? Uh, uh, what is ongoing support that you need? Because... When you put thousand a month, that is just your living cost. Yeah. You need to raise a ministry cost also. Mm. Yeah, because you know, uh, life of a missionary is not to survive in Cambodia. <laughs> 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 you better do something here, not just survive. <laughs> so it seems like that's your survival budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just the, yeah, that's yeah. my survival. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, you want to uh, raise enough money so that uh, whatever budget that you have to do ministry, for example, giving scholarship, uh, support people, support mission, and, you know, things like that. So uh, think about that and, and uh, raise that up. And you got to have an Excel sheet uh, that explains, you know, logically why you need 3000 or why you need 4000 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. And in that, and I'm telling you because you're only 36, in that you need to spec in your retirement fund. Before mm -hmm. you leave America, start some kind of retirement program mm -hmm. and start putting in 100,000 a month or 200,000 a month from now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. And that's not. Uh, because I don't have faith, I don't trust God. No, you because you trust God, you trust God that God will provide you your retirement fund. <laughs> okay. Amen. <laughs> and then you put a uh, way to give and contact. So, well, there the spelling is correct because you probably cut and paste. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I click, I click there. Okay, and this is what I got. Okay. Yeah. I have a problem with that. Why? Because if whenever you give a link asking for money, when they link it, you should go to your personal page, not the organization. Right? Because right? the right. Pe people who want to give to Joseph Hua do not care if it's a modern day, old day, ancient day organization. <laughs> They're not giving it to organization. They are giving it to you through that organization, right? So it could be X, Y, Z, we don't care. You know, oh my gosh, I just, you know, for example, I just read your flyer. My God, you know, upfront money is 4,000. I would like to give John Joseph Ha $400. I wanna get 10% of his upcoming money. Click, and then I go, what the heck? You know, modern day, what is this? Oh, that's his thing, oh, okay. So, okay, ask modern day, you know, if they would allow to a link that you, that you that ask them if they would give you a personal link that you could share with your spawn, uh, donors, they will go directly to that and bypass all that steps. Okay. That's your homework. Make sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Because when I did it, this is what I got. And I go, oh man. Oh shoot. <laughs> what it is actually. I'm actually still in the process of signing on with them. Oh, I'm sorry. So I actually don't even have, I'm still in the process of signing on with them. So I, don't, I actually don't have a personal link yet. Okay. I'm still okay. in the application process. So yeah. that's the reason. Okay. Yeah, just to... Now you're, you're saying something very important. Then don't ever post it. Yeah, I haven't, I'm not going to send yeah. it out yet. Yeah, no. yeah. Don't print it. Don't give yeah. it to anybody. You know why? Because 
So this is what happened. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened. So I, I, I said, okay, let me click. Cause guess what? I just want to support you 400. So I said, okay, that was number one click. And then I said, okay, oh, I saw <laughs> help by Lou Engel. So it must yeah. be legit, but I had to actually <laughs> click there. Yeah. Number two click, support a missionary. And then this is what I got. Log into your account. I said, there's no way. Mm -hmm. nope. An average donor will not register give 400 one time. Okay. Yeah. Because we are bothered by these NGOs, Christian FBOs, and Christian organizations. Every time we subscribe, they will send 2,000 emails every year. Mm -hmm. And so what an average donor, guy who just wants to give you $400 one shot, will never log in and register. Mm -hmm. okay? So tell them. And if you can work with any modern-day policy is that they will never, then chuck them. Look for something that they would allow just one time giving without going. most of, like YWAM, they just have, they figured it out. So most of my giving, I could just give one time and I don't ever have to register. They don't have to know who I am. Okay. So then, okay, fourth click was this. Okay, then I guess I need to locate a missionary. And then I'm saying, what the heck? This is what I got. When I clicked that, and then I said, why is 469 missionaries in nine countries? Why is number so important for modern mm -hmm. day? Okay, this then, then, and kind of a, you know, missionary who's been there and done that and who traveled to 64 countries and taught at like something like 20 seminaries, got and getting fed up by this capitalistic model. I'm like, ah, oh, this looks like a typical American mission website. Numbers mm -hmm. are so important. Okay, so I click onto Asia. I have to click onto Asia again. Oh, it seems like it's more of a self-promotion, modern day promotion. Ooh, we got 72 Asian missionaries. I'm like, <laughs> why is it important? Because yeah. like, yo, I'm just trying to help Joseph Ba. Why do I have to know your mission organization? I don't care if you got 7,000 missionaries in Asia. I just want to help Joseph Ba. And so I clicked there, guess what I got? Became a missionary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I said, I said, is this self-promotion? Mm -hmm. Is this is this what the organization trying to do? Recruit more missionaries so that they become, wow, our mission is just send 2,000 missionaries. Like Southern Baptist saying that, well, we have planned 200 churches. See, mm -hmm. me, it's all number number game. I don't like that. And then I have to, okay, finally click there. Oh, finally, after eight click, hmm. I got this. So I guess what? Okay, I'll do it. I type in your name, right? <laughs> and then I found you're not there. <laughs> you're not Surprise. there. <laughs> so I thought, that's weird. Yeah. So I just click onto this guy. Because I would like to see if this guy was you. <laughs> you like that? I made, I made him to I like you. Man. I like that. So then, guess what? I did 10th click. I clicked donate to Joseph. And once again, I got this. He <laughs> says, in order to make donation, you need to create an account with us. And I said, nope, you just lost me as your potential donor. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Think seriously about uh, joining an organization that is care more about you uh, mm. than uh, them. Um, and so uh, look for agency that has access to just helping you uh, without promoting them. Mm. Um, so, and I'm not, I'm not trash talking about them. I'm just simply saying, uh, as someone that who's been there, done that, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just saying right now that, yeah, they lost me as a donor. I'll never join another group uh, to uh, just, just, just simple one, one time donation. And I don't want to ever hear from them again. I don't want them to call and say, oh, you know, it's like, hey, if I'm serious about that, I'll call you personally <laughs> and get your email. 
right? I don't want to go through them. So they're trying to play the role of patron. Uh, and then you as a client, I said, no, I want to connect with you directly. Just, I want to use them as an avenue, the channel to give the money to you, right? And so think through that. Well, that's it for now, uh, my uh, short hour lecture. Yeah. <laughs> so if yeah. you have any questions and then thought, so this is what I'm going to do. How are we going to piggyback on this is, uh, it'll be really interesting. Uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, so give me any kind of, so watch this again. I'm going to post it, watch this again one more time and process and then come up with a new flyer uh, that speaks to you, right? And not based on false information, just why are you going to be, in, what are you doing in Cambodia? Why are you there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so the point is this, if an uh, average Cambodian, average Christian Cambodian, average Cambodian pastor gets to read your flyer in Cambodian language, will say, wow, I, I, I like this guy. I think he honors our country, okay? Because at this moment, if everything you wrote has translated into Kamai and given to my circle of friends, they will say, wow, this guy, I really don't know what he's talking about. You know, that, that church, I hope that church doesn't represent me. Yeah. I hope, but what they're going to like is, wow, they put a happy Cambodian kids. I like that because, yeah. you know, you know, he's not like a typical missionary prostituting our poverty. It will be like some guy, a missionary to uh, uh, Korea, some, uh, some missionary to Korea would put up the ghetto of Korea, the poor people mm -hmm. of Korea you know, and say that, can you help Korea? Because we got, you know how many people are suffering right now? You know how many people are dying of hunger in Korea? Plenty. You know how many people are going hungry in America? Plenty, right? So the prostituting poverty is, is that. Is there a poor people in Cambodia? Absolutely. But don't write something that average Cambodian will be ashamed of, right? Uh, so that's the rule. So anyway, so yeah. So is there any question that comes to pop of your mind so then I could work on the next lecture with you or sharing? Um, let's, call that share, let's call that sharing. I think perhaps what would I look for? What would I look for in an organization with mm. a passion for church planning? Mm. What, kind of, what would I look for? What would be a healthy, lasting organization that Okay, so you you want to be part of the Cambodian church plan? Mm -hmm. Okay, to serve them and not necessarily, you know, but just to be there to serve them if I can partake, partake. Yeah, that's good. I already have an hour lecture for you tomorrow, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, because I just taught that twenty week course. Wow, on that and and dealing okay. with the pastors because the uh, issue is not. The mode issue is not hardware. Hardware we have, it's the software, right? Mm -hmm. We have a hardware that doesn't run because software was made by yeah. uh, non kamai uh, using non kamai yeah. resources. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. Anything else? Oh, cool. No, that's that's it. I think that's it. Besides, you know, just small personal ones like, hey, you know, insurance companies and things like that but otherwise no yeah so because you gave me permission to share with the public i'll share this with you as part of my youtube so why don't you why don't we do this i'll start with my prayer and then you end with your prayer pray for us okay. pray for us joseph father we love you we thank you um thank you for just this time Lord, we worship you we we honor you Yes. Um, you bless us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's a privilege that you called us to, that you gave us to be called your son. But we love you. We thank you. Um, we just honor you, Lord. Let everything be about you, your gospel, Lord. And and uh, like Brother Babo said, it's not about us, about numbers, about capitalism or 
or anything like that, Lord. And just give us a heart to just serve you faithfully, Lord. We pray for uh, just Cambodia, Lord God, that you would just bless her, that you would shine your face upon her. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hey, brother. Okay, you said you started with the prayer. I'll end. Okay. I thought you said you were going to start and then. Okay. Good. Thank you, Pastor Pastor Bob. Orkun, is that right? Orkun. Yeah. Thank you. Orkun. 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 It's between O and O. Orkun. Orkun. Okay. Talk to you and then next Zoom meeting. Uh, when I'm ready, I'll call you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Have a blessed night. Okay. Bye.